Hi, in this video, we'll be doing two past paper questions on momentum, so you know better on how it is phrased in the exam. So we'll try these questions first, and so you may want to pause the video and try this first question. A few moments later. All right, so the first question is saying that uh, when the following two multiply, they will become impulse. So if you recall, impulse is something that we talk about that is the same as change in momentum, delta P. Okay, so that is equal to mv minus mu. So uh, I guess if you just talk about momentum, it should also be equivalent as well in terms of dimension. So uh, force times mass definitely is wrong. Okay, I'll put a cross here, but then you only need to underline. Okay, you, you have to read the questions carefully. So well, actually, underline the pair. So there's only one pair, right? So uh, nothing to do with time, no time, no time. I don't think it's relevant to time. Oh, wait, actually, I was looking for mass times velocity, but then there's no such thing. So what you actually have to think about is that remember there was an equation that is F equals to MV minus MU over T, right? And then in the last video, and then this one is the change in momentum. And then you could rearrange it so that it will be force times time. So this is the one that we want, right? And it's at the pair, right? There's no S, so obviously there's only one pair. Also support by the fact that there's only one mark. So I'm pretty sure that there's only one pair only. Okay, part B, they have given you the diagram very nicely. So uh, if they didn't, then you should have drawn it. So uh, all this information are actually shown in this diagram. So yeah, that's that's all you need to know. Uh, one important idea is they told you they will stick together after the collision. So that's something it will be useful uh, for later calculation. Uh, for the first thing that you encounter is that uh, momentum of block A before the collision. So be careful. So simply uh, the momentum of A would be mass times initial velocity so i'll say mu 2.4 and 3.0 and you just have to use your calculator i don't trust my brain 7.2 and the unit if you don't remember just refer to the equation so m times u so that's kg meter per second make sure you put down the unit part two asks you about the velocity v and the velocity v is the actual common velocity because they are moving together. So what you can say about it is uh, because of the conservation of momentum, then uh, P1 equal to P2, let's say, like before and after. So before is like the one that you have because apparently B was not moving, so it doesn't really have any momentum. So 7.2 would equal to the mass add together. So that is MA plus MB multiplied V that we have. So that's would be 7.2 and then they have 2.4 and 1.2. Okay, just copy it. And so eventually you have V, right, cause the mass is going to be 3.6. So should be two, yeah, two. Okay, so velocity is 2 meter per second. Okay, again, remember the unit. And it should be going to the right because there's only momentum going to the right direction. Part 3 asking you the impulse experienced by block B during the collision. So um, impulse, you can use a symbol delta P, change in momentum, and then MV minus MU. And then uh, mass is going to be 1.2 velocity afterwards is going to be 2 minus original momentum because it's not moving so it's 0 so the answer is simply 2.4 um, not meter per second it's going to be impulse so kg meter per second and lastly it asks you to suggest why the total kinetic energy of the two blocks like the whole system basically after collision is less than the ke are, are before the collision. So uh, remember, you are not here to show them the calculation, right? You are here to suggest. 
looking at the command word in the exam is very important. So otherwise, if you're trying to calculate, oh, uh, what's KD before, what's the KD after, it's just irrelevant, all right, if you do that. So you have to think about the reason why. And so the reason is very simple because when they collide, A colliding to B, uh, there will be sound energy. So sound energy, uh, or you can say sound is produced. during impact right, or collision. All right, so part of the KD of A is transfer as, or transform, I think that's better word, as sound energy, right? Therefore, they have less KD afterwards. All right, so here is a second past paper question on momentum. Please pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. All right, the first question asking you why momentum is a vector. In fact, it's pretty much definition, so it's not really explaining. So what we can say about it is, uh, you can say momentum is a quantity, is a physical quantity. with all right, something related to vector obviously with magnitude right which is not really important because uh, both scalar and vector will have magnitude and direction okay i think that's what i will put down if this is really an exam and, and if i have time i may come back to say we have to consider its direction so that uh, momentum can can be conserved when we only consider the direction yeah but if I just did it at the first place, then this is something that I will put down. Part B, tell you a car collision. And so they have provided you the mass. So let's put down the symbol next to the values. And so here is brought to rest. So that is V equals to zero. This is delta T. And then this should be U before the collision. So it asks you to find the change in momentum. So delta P. Just recall the equation mv minus mu. Make sure you write this down. And then uh, we have 1, 2, 0, 0. And then the v was 0. Okay, and then uh, mass again. And it was 7.5. So uh, depending on which direction you are taking, I think they haven't specified that. Then uh, I guess we can take it as to the left being positive. So just use your calculator and you'll find 9,000. Okay, so kg meter per second. Finding out the average force. So obviously for this one, uh, we want to use the equation that we have learned. Delta P, okay, sorry for my bad handwriting. Delta P over delta T. And delta P is simply the one that you calculated earlier. So somehow they are trying to be very nice to you that they break down different parts. Uh, not like my questions given to you that go all the way at once. Uh, but then, yeah, you, you then need to know what they are asking. So 9,000 divide the time, which is 0 0.36. And that should give you the answer. So 25000 Newton is the answer. So very simple, just recall the equation and substitute. Pass C tells you there's another car, so mass again, collide with the same wall with all the energy, so all KD basically, uh, absorbed by the crumble zone. So crumble zone means like the car will crumble like at the front. So the energy absorbed by the crumble zone is this one, this is energy. Uh, show that the speed before collision is this one so uh, nothing to do with momentum but then uh, it's linked to energy that you learn and it's very common in the past people actually that they link these two together because they are really relevant together so what you can do is you can say kinetic energy is half mv square and so the energy that the crumble zone take is the one that we have here um, in fact in practice, we don't have all because again, when you have collide collision, 
uh, there will be sound. So part of the energy will collide, not collide, but it will kind of transfer to sound energy. So not all, but here I think we can assume since the question told us that. And so half M1500 and then pretend we don't know the U, all right, which is the initial velocity. Okay, because here is actually to show, that means you kind of try to prove uh, this is the value you have. So if you just double check it, okay, don't try to just say, oh, it must be correct. I would suggest you to press it again. Uh, if you really want to, you can say u squared should equal to 573. And so u should equal, by taking square root, 23.9. So yeah, very close to 24 if you run it up. Part two. It asks you what happened to the car if it's traveling faster than 24 meters per second. Actually, I have no, not much idea why they ask you this. Um, but then you can deduce that, I mean, within this equation, or you can think about by this equation, F equals to mv minus mu over delta t. You can see it this way. Uh, the mass doesn't change. I mean, it's the same car. V doesn't change because eventually you should get to stop, right? Because when you hit the wall, there's no way that you don't stop, all right? And if you continue to move, that apparently is not a wall logically. So uh, V definitely will still be zero in either case. So it's simply the U get increased while delta T, in fact, delta T depends on a lot of different things. It could be the material of the car. Uh, it could be the design of the car. And that's why we have the crumble zone in fact, the crumble song helped you because it increased the delta T compared to maybe a very stiff uh, structure. But then here, since we are using the same car, so I suppose delta T shouldn't change. And so you should have, in this case, the force increase, obviously. The impact force will increase. So I'm not sure what the questions is looking for. Uh, and so I'll try to write as many like different things as I could. So um, I would say the energy, because uh, we were talking about energy, right? The energy transfer to the crumple, crumple song increase. Okay, and it's also the impact force increase as well. So obviously if you drive faster then I think it's common sense that you get hit harder. Alright so let me look at the marking scheme just so in case to be safe to you. Okay so for part A okay that's basically what we mentioned uh, that to, to say it's a vector that we have to talk about it has direction. Alright and uh, you can also say momentum depends on velocity and velocity is a vector that would also work um, and I think the rest should be fine yeah all the calculation are good uh, for part last part okay I am a bit surprised that it said other parts of the car will deform uh, bend or brakes or more damage or right? it's not that physics to me especially when you say more damage but I can understand what why they say uh, more part of the car deform because uh, think about the structure of the car then we have the crumble zone at the front so that kind of take up all the energy already and so if you are driving even faster then that means that they can't take that more like extra energy anymore and so you probably will have something more to break maybe like more in this car or maybe the wheel etc so I think that that's why they ask you this question but then yeah it's, it's not easy sometimes to guess uh, what the questions is expecting so that's why like I said the strategy for this question not like calculation right for calculation is pretty much okay you just calculate and you and that's pretty much it but then for explanation you want to put down more possible answers and so in that case um, it's easier for me to give you the marks uh, in this kind of question.